My thoughts on the current social security system. I had a guy email me today or put a comment on my uh, YouTube channel about what I think about the current social security system because as of 2033 or 34 or 32, they're only gonna have enough to pay out 75% of the claims and, uh, and it's concerning to him. And I get that 100%. And my argument on that is always, well, okay, uh, the worst case scenario is as we're sitting here today, uh, the folks who run the Social Security, the trustees, they report that in 2033, they'll be able to pay 70, 75 cents on the dollar. I think it might be 77, it, but it doesn't matter. And they'll be able to pay that until 2091 when they'll only be able to pay between 71 and 72 percent of the dollar, cents on the dollar. And is that something to be concerned with? Sure. I mean, maybe. I don't know. At the end of the day, if you're going to get $2,000 a month in Social Security and you're down to um, – you know, 75 cents of that times 0.75, you'll get 1500 bucks. That could be a pretty significant pay cut. And his question to me is, what's the solution? And my solution to this is always the same thing. And I, you know, obviously I don't run Congress. I'm not the president of the United States. I'm just some dude on YouTube. Uh, but there, there's a simple solution. To this is raise the retirement age for people under 50. You can even go as far as people under 40. I'm 48 years old. So if you want to go to people under 40, that'd make it better for me. But, you know, I've known about Social Security being somewhat of a world to hurt for a long time, and most people have as well. But if you're under 50, um, that's a good place to raise it to 70, 70 years old. Why are we allowing people um, who, have, who have many, many years yet to work to claim at 62? That doesn't make sense. Now, if you have disability, I'm not talking about disability. I'm talking about straight up Social Security retirement benefits. It doesn't make sense. 65 was a typical uh, full retirement age in the old days. I'm going to share with you an interesting story on how that came to be. I thought this is interesting. I'm going to share you a little bit of a uh, Social Security Administration may be misleading to some degree here in just a second. But you raise their full retirement age to 70 years old. You say if you're under 50 years old today, you can't file for early benefit until you're 65, 66. I, I don't even care. But what we have now is we have you can file at 62 and you can file at your full retirement age of 67. Uh, so that means you're filing, you get five years early. Now it is reduced, I get that. And Social Security trustees say actuarially, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter because we don't have the money to pay it uh, dollar for dollar. So what we do is say, if you're Josh, you're, four, you're 48 years old, you're Charlotte, you're 44, you cannot file for benefits until you're 65. And your benefits then will be reduced by those five years because you're filing five years early because the full retirement age is going to be 70. All right, so let's go back to the beginnings of Social Security. I, th I find it very interesting. This is straight from uh, socialsecurity.gov history. We're talking about von Bismarck, all right, the German chancellor from 1862 to 1890. And I'm going to share with you this. This is a, actually a very, very interesting article. Um, Germany became the first nation in the world to adopt an age-old Social Security a social insurance program in 1889 designed by Germany's chancellor Otto von Bismarck. The idea was first put forward at Bismarck behest in 1881 by Germany's emperor, William I. In a groundbreaking letter to the German parliament, William wrote, those who are disabled from work by age or invalidity have a well-grounded claim to care from the state. Bismarck was motivated to introduce social insurance in Germany, both in order to promote the well-being of workers, in order to keep German economy operating at maximum efficiency, and to stave off uh, calls for more radical socialist alternatives. I'm not sure the uh, <laughs> the calls for more efficiency by introducing uh, social insurance would to make to force people to retire. Uh, some of the uh, the folks who've been around for a while are the most efficient workers there are because they have this up here called the brain and experience that can really be beneficial. I do, frankly, let's well, sign note. I do think there's age discrimination, 100%. I completely think there is, and it actually bothers me because they're putting the people, the pastor, who can add a lot to the workforce because they're saying, "Oh, you're 60, you're too old, you don't know technology and stuff." Something not true. I mean, it might be for some folks, uh, but it might be for other folks who are 25, 26. What's going on, of course, is that they realize the older with the experience have to get paid more because they're bringing more to the table. And uh, and so a lot of companies don't want to pay these people for their uh, for their labor at a, a fair wage. So they say, oh, we're going to go over this and get this guy who's going to cost 10 bucks an hour as opposed to you at 25 bucks an hour. And I'm a capitalist. Companies do whatever they want. But you can't tell me that's not discriminatory. Because uh, they're saying you're too experienced, essentially. You bring too much to the table. Now, at the end of the day, capitalism would say if that is you as an employer, you're going to hire some young punk 
you're at 25 years old for 10 bucks an hour, where you got this older guy or lady who has some experience in chops and, and knows what's going on, you, you're going to save $15 an hour on salary, but you're going to lose $20 an hour in efficiency and productivity. Now, in the, they, the way we're uh, taught today, no one sees the productivity. They just see the bottom line. $25 an hour for uh, George, uh, $10 an hour for Dustin or whatever. And I'm just using those three names. Dustin seems like a younger guy name and George is an older guy's name. But they don't see the productivity that is lost by bringing on Dustin at 10 or a Georgia 25. That doesn't mean you turn around discriminating against Dustin, Dustin either. But I, I do believe there is some age discrimination for sure. So when I see this uh, to keep German economy, uh, German economy operating at maximum efficiency, what they're saying is uh, to make these people retire who get a certain age so they can create jobs for people who need them, the younger folks. Um, anyway, all right. So uh, despite his impeccable right wing credentials, Bismarck would be called socialist for introducing these programs, as would uh, President Roosevelt 70 years later. In his own speech, the Reich stag during the 1881 debates, Bismarck would reply, call socialism or whatever you like. It's the same to me. The German system provided contributory retirement benefits and disability benefits as well. Participation was mandatory and contributions were taken from the employee, the employer and the government. Coupled with the workers' comp program established in 1884 and the sickness insurance enacted the year before, this gave Germans a comprehensive system of income security based on social insurance principles. They would add unemployment insurance in 1927, making their system complete. One persistent myth about the German program was that it, it was adopted age 65 as a standard retirement age because the, that was Bismarck's age. This myth is important because Germany was one of the models America looked to in designing its own social security plan. So again, uh, do they adopt the age of 65 because of Bismarck's age? Well, no. In fact, uh, they said uh, the myth, uh, da, da, da. in fact, Germany initially set the age at 70 as a retirement age as Bismarck himself was 74 at that time. All right. So that's the myth that they, the Germany model adopted at 65 because that was Bismarck's age. In fact, they initially set it at 70 and, uh, and, and Bismarck was actually 74 at that time. Now, I want to go back to this because the myth was that the America is that the myth is that America adopted age 65 as the age for retirement because this was the age adopted by Germany when they created their program. All right. So that's what you hear. The myth is that U.S. FDR adopted Social Security retirement age at 65 because that was a, that was the age that uh, Germany uh, began its social insurance program. Now, they're going to dispute this Social Security Administration by saying but. In fact, Germany initially set the age at 70 as a retirement age, and Bismarck himself was 74 at the time. All right, that, that's not mutually exclusive. <laughs> it was not until 27 years later in 1916 that the age was lowered to 65. And by that time, Bismarck has been dead uh, for 18 years. All right, I, I don't understand this. So basically because America, when did we adopt ours? In the 30s after FDR signed it. Was it 35, I think, something like that. All right, <laughs> but just because Germany initially established it at 70 and America looked to Germany as a model um, doesn't mean that we didn't base our 65 years old off Germany's model because, in fact, by the time we signed our own, Germany had that model of 65. <laughs> That's why I had a just ah, critical thinking, my friends. It goes a long way. I mean, the idea that the myth is a fake because Germany actually set the model at 70 initially, which means inherently we couldn't have mimicked their model. But by the time FDR signed the legislation to bring in Social Security, Germany's model was 65. It just uh, a lack of critical thinking it drives me up the wall, actually. So I had to point that out. So. Because I can see easily, oh, it's a myth that U.S. built this model on Germany for age of 65 as old age retirement. It's inherently not a myth. It's 100% true. We did. We based our model based on the German economic model for social disability and social retirement. That's 100% true. But Germany started their model at 70. Yeah. But guess what? It's 65 by the time we incorporated our model. In fact, it was 65 uh, or 20 years in for Germany before we... Uh, <laughs> Before we created our model. Ah, anyway, I just find that funny. I had a chuckle on that. So that is the basis of the German, of the uh, U.S. Social Security system was based on Audubon Bismarck in Germany. 
I'm not here to say anything good, negative, or anything about Audubon Bismarck. Frankly, don't care. It's way it's 100, 125, 30 years ago from now, uh, before. And unfortunately, we saw the great wars of World War One and then World War Two uh, because of the probably something to do with Bismarck. Um, you know, the war that uh, Germany uh, brought down the table in the in the early part of the century. It, it's sad because eh? that led to World War II as well. And that's just, that's horrific. If you ever get a chance, re- listen to the song, The Green Fields of France. It's just, oh man, it breaks your heart. It's just anyway, wonderful song to listen to. But anyway, so that's the history of the social security system here in the United States. FDR signed it and it is the law. I mean, and it's not going away. And how do we know that? Because millions upon millions upon millions of people are on it and are relying on it today. Those millions upon millions upon millions, we're talking like 63 million people are also the vast majority of the voters. These people vote in mass compared to, you know, 35 year old young Bobby who just graduated as a teaching or as a teaching assistant trying to get his degree in, I don't know, military history. It's just, it's not even close. So the numbers of people who are retired out dwarf the numbers of people who aren't, especially when it comes to voting power. So the idea that Social Security is going away is silly. You know, does something need to be fixed? Yeah, absolutely. We do not want you to have to sacrifice 25% of your income. We don't. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because there's too many votes there. So they're going to do something. I mean, I don't know what it's going to be. I already told you what I thought it should be, but it will get done. So stop worrying so much about it and make your plan accordingly with Social Security as a backstop. You really should. I deal a lot of people. I don't want to use Social Security as my planning. I'm like, why? Why would you not want to do that? Because it's not going to be there. It's just there's no, it's simply not true. That's fear mongering. And don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. It will be there. What it will be like 30 years from now, I have no idea. But you will get paid. You might get paid 90 cents a dollar. You might not get paid a full dollar. I don't know. We don't know. They're not going to take money away from you, though. Name any time the government has actually taken money away from people who are expected. It hasn't happened. And so because that, especially on the voting population of retirees is much larger than that of workers, it's just not anything to worry about. All right. Well, I hope this helps. I thought it'd be interesting. The uh, history of the U.S. Social Security uh, system based on Audubon Bismarck, the German chancellor from 1862 to 1890. If you like what you see here, subscribe down below. Hit the bell. Be notified for future contacts. We're doing at least a video a day here. And of course, go to Heritage Wealth Planning, the blog. You'll see the uh, gift. I gave my book away, but you see the pop up to get my free book on the tax bomb that's in your retirement accounts and how the Roth IRA can help you avoid it. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.